Hello there. Welcome to this podcast. Hello. Welcome to this new episode of my podcast. All right. How are you? I hope you're okay. Obviously, I've no idea if you are. You might be there just like, ah, ah you know, um, lost in the desert with no water. All you've got is your mobile phone. You're desperately trying to call for help and you accidentally start listening to this. Ah, I need help. You're just trying to call the emergency services because you're lost in the desert and you accidentally, because your thumb's not working properly because you're so dehydrated and exhausted for because you're lost in the desert. Your thumb doesn't work properly. You end up listening to this instead. And there's me going, hi, how are you? You doing fine? Good. Meanwhile, you're there going, ah, no, water. Wah. So I've got no idea what situation you're in, but I hope that you're fine and that you're okay. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. We Yes, we've started. We're rolling. Um, uh, this is a rambling episode, which means that I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to sit here and talk to you for some time. Um, I mean, that doesn't seem to be too different to a normal episode, does it? And normally I just sit here and talk to you. But uh, rambling episodes are a little bit different. Um, but basically the idea is that uh, I talk to you without uh, without a script and without much planning involved. I've got some ideas of what I want to talk about, but the main thing is that I'm kind of speaking spontaneously um, and making most of this up as I go along. Um, it's an unplanned uh, ramble, me talking on my own for a while. Uh, so hang out with me for a while. I invite you to, to hang out and join me for a little bit. Um, some of the things I'm planning to talk about in this episode include um, thoughts on the arrival of child two, um, a recent recording of my daughter speaking English. Um, she's five years old now. A few months ago, I recorded uh, a little bit of conversation with her. And so I'll play that to you. Uh, some some news and some bits of podcast admin. Um, some thoughts about some films I've seen recently because I saw a few films. So I thought that I would talk about that. And also a recording of me doing stand-up comedy live on stage uh, recently as well. So I'll I'll play that for you too. But here we go. So uh we've we've started and uh in these rambling episodes sometimes i give myself some rules and one of the rules is no editing so uh, i've started recording and i'm not allowed to stop and start again so no editing which kind of for me is um i guess what exhilarating but the idea is that by forcing this um pointless rule on myself by forcing myself to not edit or to have the safety net of editing to take that away from me uh, that forces me to think on my feet and hopefully it brings a level of excitement and tension to the episode uh, which makes it that much more interesting and engaging to listen to, where you're just gripped. You're just like, this is so gripping. It's like a a Mission Impossible film. Is he going to be able to do it? Is he going to be able to do this episode without editing? It's not that exciting, I know. It's not really equivalent. It's not like I'm Tom Cruise and I'm holding onto the wing of an aeroplane as it flies at, you know, out of the Earth's atmosphere or something. Uh, you know, what, what's going to happen? The stakes are not quite as high as that. All I need to do is sit here and talk to you. Um, you know, so it's not that bad. But anyway, it, imposing that restriction, um, hopefully just well, puts me in a corner means I have to kind of talk my way through it all. Yes? Okay. Uh, No script either. Uh, Some of my episodes are scripted in advance and uh, that allows me to show you the text um, either on the website or a PDF or on the screen if you're watching the video version. No script for this. Uh, Just some notes for me to to follow just to remind me of the main things I wanted to talk about. Uh, Another rule is that I have to switch off my internal editor. I don't know if you know what that means, but to switch off your editor basically means to um, um, just try to block out those negative thoughts. Thoughts like, oh, you know, oh, what's what are people going to think? We shouldn't say that. You know, switch off that those thoughts that limit the things that you think and things that you say in a situation like this. So I'm trying to switch off my editor and not worry about what everyone out there in podcast land is thinking or what the kind of average podcast listener or average YouTube uh, uh, 
um, person might be thinking as they click on this because they they got maybe something in the thumbnail the video thumbnail looked interesting and they clicked on it and any minute now their finger is hovering over the uh, the thumbnail of another video on youtube and any second now they're going to go for it you know never mind never mind that i don't i'm not thinking about these things it's just me sitting in the comfort of my room uh talking to my lovely lovely audience so those are the rules no editing no script switch off my in internal editor and the fourth rule is no rules either because i'm trying not to limit myself with uh with these things uh but there we go so we started um and I, was th I thought that maybe I, at the beginning I could say something about the spirit, the spirit of this podcast or the spirit of these rambling episodes especially. And, um, and I think you know, I wanted to talk again about English teaching. Um, and, uh, and because, you know, I've, I've taught English for, for um, like 20 years or something. And a lot of the um, things I've learned from communicating in that scenario being an English teacher have inspired me in doing this podcast right uh, it's that and also probably doing stand-up comedy as well those two things I've done a lot more teaching than stand-up uh, but I have done I've been doing stand-up comedy on and off for about 15 years uh, I've been doing this podcast for um, well, the podcast and the stand-up, I've been doing them for a similar length of time, but the teaching I, I've been doing for, for a lot longer than that. And obviously, I've done many more hours of teaching than I've done. So it's probably I've done more teaching, teaching first uh, in terms of hours done, and then podcasting in terms of hours done, and then probably stand-up would be third. But the, the stand-up and the teaching, uh, sort of, I kind of take inspiration from those two things in making this podcast. And one of the things I thought of that I thought before I started recording this, maybe I was like walking um, down the road to come here to my office today, to my pod room. And I had a, I thought, I oh, know, there's an inspiring idea. There's an interesting thing. I can talk about that thing that inspires me to record these episodes. And even now, you're, I'm now thinking, oh, is it that interesting? I hope so. But so as a teacher, you have your lesson plan you've got your class of students and stuff like that maybe they maybe they are studying with you for a couple of weeks depending on what course is is happening uh, but you have your lesson plan and you have the material and all the things that you're going to be doing in the lesson um, and you know in the morning you come in and and you try to be professional you've got your group there you have to do specific exercises to make sure the group gets to know each other and and then you you know you get in there with some language work fairly quickly uh, whether it be grammar or vocabulary or pronunciation listening skills speaking skills reading writing you know you get in there with the with some substantial uh training right and it, it you've thought about it in advance you've planned it and stuff like that um let's say there's a group of about 15 students in the room and you really hope and do your best to make sure that they are engaged and fully involved in everything that you're doing and all the exercises that you're doing but there's always that sense that it's you know it, it you know as a teacher and just as a human being you know when in a room you've you've got a genuine feeling of interest and engagement when there's a something kind of really human happening and you get a sense that people are really connecting on a truthful level and that's really what you want to get at all times in your lessons um, but that can be it can be hard to get that and you can try to plan for it to happen by managing the activities and exercises that you do and managing yourself as a teacher. But sometimes, no matter how hard you plan for it in advance, you can't manufacture it. But then there are moments in English lessons when, um, when, those, mo when those things do happen, sort of, as we say, organically or naturally, uh, those moments do come up where suddenly you feel like everyone in the room is all on the same wavelength everyone's thinking about the same thing everyone sort of seems to put down their pen or they they kind of stop being a student in a classroom for a moment and they become just a person connecting with other people in a room and 
something much more truthful and interesting and engaging happens. And often those moments happen sort of outside the formal boundaries of the lesson. I mean, they will happen, for example, uh, maybe when you say to the class, okay, let's have a break. And you say that and it's kind of like you've drawn a line or you've closed the door and another door door has opened the 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 door that closed is the the room of the sort of metaphysical room of um uh the english lesson and then when you say let's have a break then everyone's just kind of a lot more human on the same level it's very strange to 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 explain this i'm not sure i'm doing a good job of it another example might be after you've had a break or after you, the lunch break you you come back to the classroom and the students are kind of relaxing maybe some of them aren't in the room and you just start talking to them or they start talking to each other there's a conversation going on and you get involved in the conversation or someone asks you a question and you start kind of talking about stuff that you hadn't planned for something spontaneous happens and in those moments i feel like there's a much better connection and those things can't be planned for so i suppose i've always tried to achieve that in my episodes try to get that spirit in those those moments um outside of the normal formal uh teaching does that make sense do you know what i'm talking about i hope so i hope i hope you do so anyway that's kind of like the spirit let's imagine that we are uh we're, we're th this is a, a break from the english teaching lesson it's a break from the english course that we've that we're enrolled in maybe even we've gone to the pub uh, after class in the evening because we do that in language schools sometimes uh, when i worked in london we used to do that quite a lot especially during summer courses there would be you know, a two-week intensive summer course where you'd be with a group of students for six hours a day. And then one of those evenings would be a, a trip to the to the pub. You'd go, to, you'd take the students to a nice pub with a nice garden and they can, you know, have some drinks and socialise. And in those moments, you get the impression that, that those, are the, those are the moments where you're sitting around a table in a pub garden, having a few drinks and those are the moments that the students remember and sometimes those are the moments when people really learn things or really have a kind of um, important watershed moment in their learning of English where they kind of make a breakthrough maybe in fluency or they make a more sincere human connection th with the language there so that's that's where this podcast happens in those moments outside the formal boundaries of an English lesson and that's definitely the spirit of these sort of rambling episodes and that's why I try to impose these pointless rules uh, which is like I'm not allowed to edit and uh, I'm not allowed to have a script and I'm not really allowed to prepare too much in advance because I want it to be spontaneous to create the right human connection but also for the English to sound spontaneous too I think there is a difference. I've talked about this many times. I won't go on about it a lot right now, but I think there is a difference between spontaneous speech and uh, pre-written speech when someone is reading from a script. Even if you're a really good actor and it's a really good script, we can tell on an almost subconscious level that this is a person reading something that has been written in advance. Whereas speaking spontaneously and responding to sort of whatever's happening in the moment um, I think that we are more attuned to that kind of speech and we probably find it a lot more engaging and interesting to listen to. There are pros and cons of both. The pros, the, the, the advantage of listening to non-scripted speech is what I've just said, that hopefully it's more uh, engaging and sounds more natural and therefore is easier to focus on but the negative is that you don't get a script to check right you can't uh you can't read what you're hearing at the same time or go back and and check for certain words if you're watching this on youtube you can um switch on the automatic subtitles um and you should be able to see you know what i'm saying and these days the automatic uh you know auto generated subtitles on youtube are 
very good like surprisingly accurate especially when it's just me talking on my own it's able to follow 99 percent of what i'm saying and it does get most of it right obviously it does make some mistakes but you know that's just what we're dealing with um okay uh on the other hand if you're listening to the audio version the advantage there is that sure you can't look at the subtitles i think unless unless spotify does that these days i'm not sure but you can't look at the the subtitles but you can do something else you can like walk down the street or you can ride the bus to work or you can drive a car or something like that you know you can just uh close your eyes um and just focus on the words and the sounds without being distracted by the visuals like oh you know just being distracted by my haircut or whatever it is that um you feel moved to to think about while while i'm talking Mm, this is fascinating stuff isn't it so this will be the last episode i record uh that's not the end of the sentence don't worry this is not the last episode i i'm i will record uh this is the last episode i will record uh before taking two months off okay now you've probably heard me say this uh again and again on the podcast recently but there it is that's just what's going on with me so i'm going to take two months off because my wife is going to give birth to our second child like any minute now any moment now in fact i I, I have to keep checking my phone just to make sure my wife isn't texting me saying, uh, I think it's happening. You know, I have to keep an eye on my phone uh, because it could happen at any moment. I mean, some of you might be thinking, well, shouldn't you be at home, Luke? No, it's all right. I, I'm, I'm not far. We're not far away from each other. I don't think it's necessary for me to just stay there with my wife, just like watching her like this. Is it happening? Is it happening now? How about now? Is it is it happening? Nothing, you know. That's not necessary. In fact, she's at work. She she's still going to work, which is very impressive. She is, um, yeah. The due date for the birth is two days from today. It's today's Friday. The due date is on Sunday, and she's still going to work and stuff. It's very impressive. She does. She works for herself. She she doesn't have a boss breathing down her neck. Um, uh, but still, she goes to the office and where she she works and goes there every day, and so so that's impressive. So anyway, everything's fine. Um, we did go to a uh, hospital uh, just for a check um, last Monday, and they said, yeah, everything's totally fine. The baby's doing great. Uh, he's not ready to come out yet because they check for contractions. They kind of put some something on. Uh, my wife's tummy and check for contractions there were no contractions happening uh, and they scanned the baby the baby's fine so the plan is basically we'll go in again on sunday go go to the hospital again on sunday so they can have another look and see if the baby is starting to come out or not and um anyway so sunday's the day so what the the baby might be born on sunday might the baby might be born any like five minutes from now we we don't know but um in any case uh the plan is that i'm gonna have two months off you've heard me talk about this ad nauseum no doubt uh but uh so i'll be taking two months off but for you it, it it's really not going to be noticeable at all i think because as i've said before I've done lots and lots of episodes pre-recorded loads of episodes i've got them all in a queue and at this moment it's the end of june today is friday the 30th of june and i've got episodes that are going to take me all the way through until uh the end of august or even the beginning of september okay so you're now listening to this after having heard all of the hopefully and hopefully you've heard them all anyway you you're listening to this after possibly hearing all of those episodes i've got in a queue so i hope you've enjoyed those episodes the the one about monopoly um which was the last one uh what else what else is there what else have you probably heard the conversation about monopoly uh the the episode called things that make you go hmm which i really enjoyed uh i I really enjoyed all of them actually i've had a really good run of episodes uh the episode with kate billington uh the three hour mega ramble um i hope you enjoyed that did you listen to all of that uh the one about uh describing a car accident in 15 styles of english the, the the conversations i had with anthony rotuno and the lemon adventure the lemon simulator um 
the article about the best way to learn a language, according to research, uh, the red-headed league, the Sherlock Holmes story, and and stuff like that. So you will have heard those things. So um, yeah, so this is going to, so this is going to be after all of those. So you might be listening to this at the beginning of September, um, but I'm recording it at the end of June. And so I'm going to talk about in more detail about how it how it feels to be on the brink of having a new human life um, just happen. <laughs> uh, that's not the best way of putting that. To be on the brink of becoming a, a new father for the second time. To, for, uh, the, to be on the brink of having a new baby um, at home, a new member of the family with us, which is a very strange and interesting feeling. I'll talk about that again in, uh, in, in some detail in a moment. But for you, in terms of the two-month break, you're not going to notice because I've got all these other episodes that are going to be published while I'm away. But maybe what I can do is the next episode of this podcast, maybe I can do another episode like this. Maybe I can do one with my wife. We'll see. I, I, I can't make any promises because I don't really know what things are going to be like uh, in the, uh, at the end of August or the beginning of September. I've no idea. But maybe it could be interesting, if possible, to record another episode that will be published immediately after this one, where I'll talk about, uh, you know, the situation and the baby and stuff like that. And it, it'll only be one week for you, but it'll be two months for us. Maybe that'll be interesting. Um, so anyway, yes, two months break. Um, and then, but for you, it's going to be just one week. Okay, so uh, what about having a having a uh, second child? Now, a lot of you will be parents, and you'll know what it feels like. A lot of you uh, haven't had kids, and you don't know. Um, I, don't, I wonder what you think, but uh, I'll just try and put yourself in my shoes. That um, at the moment, it doesn't seem real. It just doesn't seem real. Of course, my wife is like fully pregnant, and I understand what this what this means, but I just can't quite understand what it means to have a new member of the family about to join us. It's very strange. It's a very strange thing. Some people call it a miracle, don't they, childbirth? Um, I wouldn't go that far, but it's there's definitely something very strange about it because um, any moment now, or any day now, there's just going to be... There, there are three of us in the family right now, in the immediate family, just three of us, but then it's going to be four. Like, where's that other person coming from? Now, I know physically uh, he's he's going to come from my wife's uterus right uh, i know the, the biology of it but it's very odd when you imagine that so the child is going to be born and the thing about babies is that they just they arrive right they're born but they they in to some extent they arrive already with a personality like they just have a character they have a spirit and a personality and a character often from day one um Obviously, that character, that personality probably gets molded and changed and adapts and stuff over time because of the experiences that person has as they grow up. But you can definitely sense that when a child is born, obviously, at the beginning, it's hard to read the, the child's emotions and personality and stuff. But the personality emerges, you know, over the, the following few weeks and months. And you can definitely notice a personality you know, the kids are either, they, they can be calm, they can be angry, they can be uh, energetic, um, you know, or other things. You, anyway, you just, and the face, you know, you, you, you see the face, it's like a person. Where does this, where's this spirit come from? It's a very strange thing. Religious people will, will obviously have their interpretation of what that means and, and, and the rest of it. But there's, there's something uh, unexplainable um, about it and wonderful it's it's incredible um but at this moment so yeah there's three of us we've got a five-year-old daughter and we've achieved a sort of equilibrium in the family where when a child arrives it is i've heard people say that it's like a bomb going off in your home i mean that's that's not that's not a very good analogy is it really because that's terrible a bomb going off is a terrible terrible thing so that's that's just that's not a great metaphor but i suppose what it means is that it can destabilize things it can kind of um it has a powerful effect 
and the order that was in place before can be turned upside down it can kind of turn make things that were previously ordered it can make them chaotic in some way um i mean this is our second child so we kind of know what to expect to an extent on that in that regard although our first child as a baby she was pretty easy to manage really she didn't cry a lot there wasn't too much drama um so we hope that the second child will be similar but anyway I was saying that we've, we, as a family of three, the ch our daughter is now five years old, and so things have achieved a sort of stability or equilibrium, and that equilibrium is about to be sort of upset by the arrival of the second one. Uh, so we don't know. We it's a there's a lot of unknown stuff here. We don't know what he'll be like. We don't know what um, the birth will be like. Uh, we're not entirely sure how it's going to affect the equilibrium. I mean. We 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 cannot wait to meet him. We can't wait to to meet him, see his face, see what he looks like, see what colour his eyes are, what colour his hair is. If he looks like me, if he looks like my wife, you know, or some incredible combination of the two. Which is the, the another miraculous thing about childbirth is that you you see that a child is like somehow they look they can look like two people at the same time, which is uh, really really fascinating. Um, so um, you know it's a lot of unknown stuff, and obviously I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everything's going to be healthy, that my wife will be healthy, that the baby will be healthy. That's the most important thing, of course. But yes, yeah, so. Um, there's some anxiety, some nerves, some stress, um, and uh, some excitement, and some wonder, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, I, I've kind of forgotten what it was like to when the first one was born. It's five years ago, but I've sort of forgotten what it's like. It's a bit of a blur, but I remember that it was incredibly intense, like in the hospital in the uh, maternity ward in the room um, it was intense um, when the baby is coming you know um, it seemed to take a long time but at the same time it was immediate as well you know it seemed to take a long time in the sense that we uh, waited a lot of uh, a lot in the room and in the ward because although the baby was coming um, he wasn't quite coming fast enough so we had to wait and wait and wait. But then when it was time, you know, when the midwives and the doctors basically said, OK, it's got to happen now. And they 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 induced the birth to some extent. That means that they I don't know quite now, quite how they do it, but I think they introduced some hormones to uh, essentially uh, accelerate the birth process. So the our first child was you know was born um, now it wasn't a, a cesarean uh, he was she was born um, you know naturally let's say although uh, my wife did have a um, an epidural to help with the pain um, but uh, so when it was time for him to uh, for her to arrive getting mixed up when it was time for her to arrive it did happen very suddenly and it was very intense and that's what you see in the movies where you know. Everyone's saying push, 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 breathe, 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 and ah, and then there's, and the 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 the, the mother to be is um, getting is experiencing a lot of pain, and the husband is standing there like not knowing what to do, uh, like that. And then there's a baby, you know, and then it's all it's all emotional, uh, but that does happen very quickly, and it's quite um, uh, it's quite intense, so. Anyway, but my brain can't really handle the fact that a new uh, that a, a new life is going to arrive. Where's it going to come from? What, what, you know, <laughs> it's very strange. So right now, I'm just trying to manage my expectations. And you know, to be honest, probably I shouldn't. Uh, to an extent, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I shouldn't be sitting here talking to you about this. Maybe what I should be doing is just lying down and just trying to sleep. Just you know, just using these moments, just just absorb as much sleep into my body as I possibly can, so that when the baby is here, I can, you know, I don't know if that's how sleep works. It doesn't work like that, does it? It's, you can't be like a camel for sleep. You don't just absorb 
sleep in the way that a camel absorbs water which it can then use later that's not how the human body works is it you can't just absorb sleep and then sort of use it use the stored sleep later to help you survive those sleepless nights um but i probably shouldn't be getting too tired or anything um but anyway we don't know we don't know what's going to be like what's he going to be like what's he going to look like how is the landscape of our lives going to change uh, also in a practical sense you know just stuff like stuff we take for granted now like just going out and doing things going out to the shops or going out for lunch we can basically do that now with our five-year-old daughter sometimes you know she gets easily distracted and, and things but it's 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 doable you know whereas when you've got a brand new baby everything can be a bit tricky because suddenly oh you know if you're a parent you understand if you're not a parent you hopefully you at least will find it sort of interesting to to think about that um but that's probably enough about that um let's just say that i'm trying to stay calm i'm trying to stay philosophical about it i can't wait to meet this boy my son uh whenever i say my son it sounds very star wars my son i'm going to be like darth vader hopefully i won't be darth vader I hope hopefully i'll be a um a nice dad uh, rather than that the sort of the hollywood movie father figure bad guy type character i mean i don't think i will be but i mean just from a, a freudian point of view uh, every father probably to some extent somehow just by just by being the father by being the the paternal figure there's a bit of darth vader in there isn't there you know even if you even if you don't mean to be scary that just by being the father there's something darth vaderish about it there's a lot of complex psychology involved um uh, but anyway i hope that uh, it's all going to be nice i'm looking forward to it looking forward to having a a boy and a girl it's going to be great but uh so as i said probably what i'll do is uh, or what i could do is after is the next episode i do after my two month break could be a chance for me to talk about what happened and talk about the baby and maybe talk with my wife about it and stuff um like we did for our daughter when she was born is it episode something episode i can't remember which episode it is um i can't remember which episode it is but somewhere in the archive there is an episode called the birth of my daughter and um so my wife and i in that episode talked about you know uh yeah, the birth, exactly that, the birth of our daughter and, and what happened and what it was like and what it's like having a baby and stuff. Maybe we can do that for um, for the next one as well. Hmm, okay. Um, now, I'm, I've, I've got my window wide open here. Uh, I've got the window wide open because it's, it's a hot day. And um, I'm always, whenever I have the window open, I'm always very conscious that my neighbours might, might be able to hear me saying all of these things because there's a courtyard, okay, with lots of other uh, windows from other apartments all facing into the courtyard. And I'm on the top floor, so it's just sort of the roofs and the sky above. But still, I'm sure that my voice is being, my voice is probably carrying around this courtyard. And I can see a couple of windows that are open down there. And so I always wonder if my neighbours can hear me talking. And I don't know what I think about that. On one hand, I kind of think, well, they shouldn't really be able to listen to this because, you know, I've made this joke on the podcast before. Those people are, are, are getting ad-free episodes of Luke's English Podcast, aren't they? You know, they're, they're managing to listen to this without advertising at the beginning and sometimes in the middle of the episode. Um, without having become a member of Luke's English Podcast Premium. That just doesn't seem right. Um, but then again, maybe they don't have a choice. You know, maybe they're just listening to it like, well, I'm, okay, I'm listening to you, Luke, but I didn't choose to listen to you. So yeah, I don't get ads, all right? That's the, that's the only advantage that I get. Um, so I don't know. I think it's all right. But if someone, I don't know, if, okay, if you're one of my neighbours and you can hear me right now, just, just shout out to me something like, close your window. I won't be I won't be offended. Say close your window please. Now in fact you can shout out could you close your window please? Thanks. And then say nice one as well. Okay? If that's if if you can hear me and you'd like me to close my window just make a polite request to do so and I'll be happy to do it. Nothing. No one. 
either a they're not listening um either a they can't hear me or b they can hear me but they're just not listening um or c uh they can hear me uh and they don't understand you know maybe they're french and they don't understand what i'm saying or option four a b c four i mean a b c d option d is that uh they are listening and they're just having a fantastic time just sitting there oh great great ad free episodes of luke's english podcast carry on luke this is great my english listening comprehension skills are improving exponentially with your content uh maybe that's the case um so i said before that i would give you an update from my daughter um so um the latest recording that i did with my daughter and um so you can see how her english has developed now i'm not inviting you to to judge her english or anything she's five all right uh but let's just say that my daughter is an occasional contributor to uh the podcast um i can't get a full episode of conversation with her because you know she's five and after about five minutes she gets quickly distracted and usually she wants to hold the recording device i use my um portable recording device which i have got with me here suddenly now it's very it's just really important for me to open this and if you're looking at the video version for me to show you if you're not looking at the video version i can describe it it's a little handheld portable audio recorder uh the zoom h1n handy recorder available now from all good um shops but uh no this is uh, this is i'm not sponsored by zoom but it's a really good little handheld recorder so anyway that's what i use when i'm out and about so when i'm when i when i talk to her Normally I can get, you know, a few minutes of reasonable conversation with her, but then quickly it breaks down and she just wants to hold the recorder and press all the buttons and and stuff like that. So um so I've got about, I don't know, maybe 5 5 to 10 minutes of recording for you uh, to listen to here. Now if you are a long-term listener to this podcast and you've heard other recordings with my daughter, then you you know, you might have you might have got a sense of how her English has been developing. Um, uh, I've said before in previous recordings, I think the was the first time I, I had her... Well, the first time she was on the, sh- on the show was just when she was a baby and you could hear some baby noises in the background sometimes, just like gurgling and gaga noises in the background. And then I actually sat down with her when she was about two years old and we were on holiday and we had a you know we had a, a we had a fun little conversation about a movie that she was imagining we imagined that we were watching a film with with some of her teddy bears in it um and then other other conversations over the over the last few years and um so in previous recordings when she was smaller she was mixing up french and english quite a lot because as you may know i live in france and my wife is french um our daughter uh, she's gone to French um, local public schools. Uh, she's also spent time in a bilingual section in a in a school where they had English speaking teachers in the morning and uh, French uh, teachers in the afternoon. And these days, she's in a school where she has twice a week. She's in a group of um, she's in a, with a group of other kids who are in the same situation as her, meaning that they've got one at least one parent at home who speaks English as a first language. And so, um, you know, the she's in a class twice a week with these kids, and the class is done in English, and it's all in English. And and so she has like two English classes in English, not about English, but just normal school lessons where they learn whatever kids learn at five years old but everything's done in english and all the other kids um speak english like her as a as one of her primary languages one of their primary languages so that's a bit of context uh i we speak english mostly at home um including my wife whose english is is good and um so we we tend to do most things in english at home uh, but anyway, you may have you may remember that uh, previously when my daughter was on the show, uh, you could hear that she mixed up French and English quite a lot. Um, you know, she kind of would it would just kind of be a bit half and half, 
Um, and I said before that I expected that the two languages would diverge over time, that they would kind of separate, that she would get more and more of a sense of when she's speaking English, it's only English, and when she's speaking French, it's only French. And that has definitely been happening, uh, which is really interesting to see. And so she is much more able to now sort of stay in one language exclusively she can switch like that she can switch between the one and the other just like instinctively it's incredible uh, but when she's in one she can stay in that one language and she knows more or less not to use french words every now and then she'll use a french word for something for example the word pencil case she doesn't seem to use the word pencil case she calls it a a trousse which I'm probably pronouncing badly, but that's the French word for a pencil case, the little case that you put your pens and pencils in. Uh, but for the most part, she speaks exclusive, exclusively in English when she's speaking English and exclusively in French when she's speaking French. Um, uh, every now and then, every now and then, you do hear her saying le instead of the uh, for some reason. So she'll say le, le, you know, le podcast or whatever it is instead of the in the recording but this recording is about two or three months old and these days she she's actually stopped doing that as far as i can tell and other things you might hear some other things other traces of her uh you know uh, her other language in her english but yeah so bilingualism is a, is a fascinating thing anyway i'll let you listen to uh this little chat with my daughter in her bedroom the two of us so let's let's take a break from the pod room and go to my daughter's bedroom. Not the not in the video version, though. Um, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea uh, while you listen to uh, me and my daughter, and I'll let you discover what happens and what we talk about. Here we go. Okay, okay. I'm rec there have to be some rules to this. Okay, the rules are that. Hold on. Wait a minute. The rules are that I'm holding it. Okay. Okay, now, first of all, uh, welcome back onto the podcast. How does it feel to be back on my podcast? Good. Yeah? When was the last time? Do you remember? No. It was in uh, Granny and Grandad's garden. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what we talked about? No. We talked about certain food that Granny likes to cook. Oh, yeah. That was super. Do you remember what the food was? No. No, you can't hold it yet. Not yet. Maybe, maybe later. What was the food? Um, I don't remember. It was really, really tasty uh, cakes that Granny's famous. Oh, yeah, that was super. What was it, though? Strawberry. Come on, Granny's fa Granny's famous cakes. Oh, yeah, bagel tart, bagel tart. Exactly, you were doing that the whole time. Now, here we are in your bedroom. What are we doing in your bedroom? Uh, playing as a teacher. Playing, that's right. Uh, I mean... I think we can do different situations. Let's have a situation where, if you come over here, let's have a situation. I like the one where, hmm, let's say you're the doctor and I'm a patient and I come into your office, okay? Knock, knock, knock. Yes. Um, yes. Is this the doctor's office? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Right, because I'm, I've got an appointment with you. Um, you're Dr. Thompson, right? Okay, yes, I am Dr. Thompson. Okay, so shall I sit down or...? Mm, yes. Okay, all right, so I'm sitting sit down. down. Sit down. I'll sit here, okay. Right, so as the doctor, you've got to ask me questions and things now. Um, what's your illness? I'm not sure, but I just feel sort of very tired and I've got a really painful leg. Put it on my chair. On my special chair. Okay, I'll put my leg on your special chair there. Uh, your feet. My yeah. foot. Yeah. Okay, you're going to in investigate, you're going to inspect it. Okay, she's having a look with a special device of some kind. Like, like in Paw Patrol. Like in Paw Patrol. Your leg is a, your, your leg is a tiny bit broken. Your, your muscle is a tiny bit broken broken. Really? Yes. Oh dear. I was wondering why it hurt so much. I is there anything that we can do about it? I don't. We can bandage the tit. Bandage it? <laughs> okay. I finished. Now you need to have a... Um, I need to have a wheelchair. Um, yes. And, um... Crutches. Yeah. Crutches and wheelchair. Both? Yeah. Oh gosh. 
Okay. Do you know how long it's going to take to get better? Mm, a, a lot of weeks. <laughs> oh no! So I'm going to have to be in this wheelchair for a lot of weeks. Yeah. Do you have what? What does a lot mean? Like how many weeks? Um, all of the weeks. All of the weeks? Just every. All, all of your life. What? But not when you're big. Not when I'm big. Yeah. Only when you're little. Ah, so for the rest of my childhood, I'm going to have to be in a wheelchair and on crutches. Yeah. Oh no, that's really sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. This is terrible news. You need to wash your hands a tiny bit. Why oh, yeah, I see an injury on your hand? Oh, something else. Oh, look. Uh, a lot of blood is coming out. Oh I'm gonna put a bandage on it. That's because I put my hand down just now on the table, and one of your one of your knives was there. And ah, oh, my hand has been cut by one of your knives. Why don't you tidy up your room, doctor? Yes. I finished. You finished. That was quick. Okay. Can you fix my hand, please? I'm losing losing a lot of blood here. Mm, I'll put it in the water, please. Okay. Pshh. Finished. And now bandage. Pshh. Okay, wow. Bandages are just the solution to all problems, aren't they? And, um, plaster, pink, and bandage. Bandage. A bandage, a plaster, and then another bandage. A bandage, a plaster, a bandage. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Wow, thanks so much, Doctor. I mean, I don't know why... The, 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 the foot thing means I have to stay in a wheelchair for the rest of my childhood. But um, anyway, thank you so much for helping me. What would have happened if I hadn't come to see you? If you hadn't put a bandage on my foot, what, what would have happened to my foot and my body and my life? I don't know. Really? I thought you were a doctor. Don't you know about these things? I don't know about that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, doctor. How much do I owe you for that? What's the fee for this kind of service? Oh, um, nothing. Really? Yeah. Well, it's free? Yeah. Oh, you are a nice doctor. You are a nice doctor, aren't you? What, what's that sound? What's that? A unicorn has arrived in the room. Where did that come from? It's, it, keeps, it keeps trotting around the place. Wow, it's a magical unicorn as well. Does it speak? Hello. Oh my gosh, it does speak with a very high-pitched voice. That's nice. I am a unicorn, it says. I am a unicorn, it says. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, very good. Now, <laughs> now, do you have any stories that you can tell us? Let's put the unicorn down for the moment. Do you have any stories? What's, what game do you like to play with, with me? Sometimes. Monopoly. Mono <laughs> Monopoly, oh yeah. Okay. What do you like about Monopoly? It's to win a lot of cash <laughs> and a lot of um, building. Mm, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Owning everything and taking all of the money from all the other players. Are you good at Monopoly? Yes. How do, how do you win a game of Monopoly? I beat first. Hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Tell me about music. What kind of music do you like? I don't know. But you like the Beatles, don't you? Yeah. Which Beatles can you name? Their Paul na and Jack. <laughs> Almost. Not Jack, it's... John. John, pa yeah. Paul and John. Right. And uh, which one's your favourite? Paul. Oh, Yeah. Why do you like Paul? Because he doesn't have a lot of nose in. He doesn't have a lot of nose no. in it, yeah? Um, um, like, he doesn't like um, a lot of... Uh, like when he's singing, he doesn't... He, he, can't, he, he's, does, he doesn't have a nasal-sounding voice. Yeah. Unlike, um, unlike Lennon, John Lennon's got a sort of nasal-sounding voice, doesn't he? What does he sound like when he sings? <laughs> it's quite good. It's actually quite a good impression. And what about Paul? What does Paul sound like when he sings? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it, I would say. Yeah, okay. I'm washing the floor. Oh, that's nice. Great. Great. Good. Please continue to do the housework. You don't normally do this kind of helpful stuff. 
Is this just because this is on the podcast and you want to make a good impression? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to wash you. You're going to wash me? Ah. <laughs> ah, ah. How was your day at school today? I don't know. You, don't, you never know, do you? Yeah. It's a secret or something? Yeah. What, does, do, they, do they wipe your memory when you leave the building? Yeah. Okay. I'm wiping the board. You're wiping the board, just like the way they wipe your memory, apparently, when you leave the school. There must be something you can remember about your day today. Um, no. Really nothing. Didn't you play the violin? No, I didn't. I think you did. I didn't. Okay, well, it's been fun having this, doing this little recording. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you have anything else to say to the people of planet Earth? Any messages for them? No. What, what do you think people should do, generally? I know. Mm, mm, not to, to put some, some dirty things on the floor. Right, don't litter, <coughs> you mean. Don't, don't drop litter. Yeah. Okay, it's good. Good advice. Don't drop litter, everyone. Okay, there you go. Look after the look after the environment. Keep the streets clean and tidy. Yeah. And we will speak to you soon, right? Yeah. Okay, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> okay, so there you go. That was my little daughter, five years old. I think when we recorded that, yeah, it was probably March or February, so she just turned five at that point. Um, she's five and a half now. So there you go, yeah, listeners, all right? It's words of wisdom. Don't put some dirty things on the floor, okay? Don't drop litter. And, uh, yeah, Monopoly, you heard her mention that, which is um, a nice coincidence considering the last episode of this podcast was about Monopoly. Um, and we do like to play Monopoly a lot. Uh, we normally play the junior version, which is a simplified version, but we also play the uh, the adult version with her these days. When I say the adult version, I mean the grown-up version, if you know what I mean, right? The, the full version with the green and red, uh, the green houses and the red hotels. She is almost old enough now to, to be able to handle that. In fact, we played it the other day. Now, this is interesting because after... I recorded that episode with Anna about Monopoly and we got into the strategy of how to win at Monopoly and the best um, sets of properties to win. And I said, yeah, the orange is the most powerful set in the game, the orange set. And you stand a good chance of winning if you get the orange set. And the green set is, you know, overrated. It's actually problematic because the return on investment on the green properties is not that great and it's a difficult set to win with so after all of that stuff and after i sounded like i really knew that i was some master of monopoly we played monopoly the three of us uh, me my wife and our daughter and uh, i got the oranges and my wife got the greens and of course she won so despite having the orange properties i still managed to lose and despite having the green ones, my wife managed to win. I mean, it, it, it helped the fact that halfway through the game, my daughter, our daughter, basically decided that she wanted to team up with her mummy. And she just gave her mum all of her properties and all of her money. So that's probably the reason that she won, despite having the green properties. But there you go. So they teamed up against me. Um, so there you go. And that's, I just thought I'd play you that. And maybe in another six months or so, um, I can do another recording with her and we'll, we'll see how things go. And then maybe one day when I'm, when I'm ready to retire, I can um, hand over the, 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 the podcast to my daughter and she can continue the legacy in the future. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm joking about that. Sorry, I slurped my tea there. Very rude of me. I'm joking about that. Kind of. I mean, partially joking. Um, uh, but, uh, I mean, that's that's something that I feel like older generations used to do. They would, you know, you'd have a family business and, and the expectation would be that the children would, would take on that family business and continue the legacy. Um, but I don't know if I could expect my daughter to carry on doing Luke's English podcast. It'd be Luke's daughter's English podcast, I suppose, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, moving on to something else. Um Telegram, Telegram, you know, Telegram, the app. Um, 
Um, some people some to me, sometimes ask me, Luke, are you on Telegram? And the fact is, I'm not on Telegram. So um, I'm not on Telegram, but I understand that there are a couple of accounts on Telegram which are called Luke's English Podcast, that you can find Luke's English Podcast on Telegram. But I just wanted you to know that that's, that's not me, okay? So if you find an account that looks like it's me, that it's um, publishing my episodes there, and it's got the Luke's English Podcast logo, and maybe the name is Luke's English Podcast, that's, that's not me, okay? That's all I wanted to say, uh, just so that you know, just so you're aware that those accounts are not actually run by me. Um, and... Uh, I suppose, you know, to an extent, we need to be a little careful of these things. Um, I saw on YouTube uh, fairly recently, uh, there was a, a sort of a spate of um, scams going around on YouTube. These things happen sometimes. The way it works on YouTube is often you'll find that someone, a, a scammer, a scammer is a person who is kind of doing something to trick people into giving you money or personal information. They're trying to scam you. You do get some scams on YouTube, which you should be aware of. And the scam is usually that they, the account will use a picture of, of me or the, a picture of the, uh, the content creator or the vlogger or whatever it is, the, you know, the person running the channel. Let's just use mine as an example. So they'll use a picture of me and the name will be something like Luke's English Podcast Official or something like that. It'll be a different name to the actual name of the account, the actual, my actual YouTube channel, but it'll be a picture of me, the same picture that I use for my channel's uh, picture, you know, profile picture or whatever. So it'll have that same picture. The name will be something very similar. And then it'll say something like this, um, um, you know, uh, send me your phone number um, for my exclusive um, um um, Telegram account or, uh, or or this, something like this. You've been chosen to win a special prize. Just send me your phone number and you can get it. You know, things like that. Like you, someone saying that you've won a prize or that I'm going to give you special or something special, um, something like that. In the comments section of uh, one of my videos, that's a scam. It's not me and you shouldn't uh, respond to it. In fact, you should probably block it or report it. OK, um, so watch out for that. OK, and if you find uh, Luke's English podcast on Telegram, just for your information, it's not actually me that's running that account. Uh, all right. Um, now, I did say at the beginning of this that I would talk about films and stuff. I, I don't want to talk too long because actually, um, well, I don't want to I don't want to take ages for this. And also, I do want to get a bit of rest actually today. Uh, um, I am officially, I am actually officially on parental leave now. I am on paternity leave, um, you know, paternity leave, maternity leave. That's when the mother, uh, after giving birth or just before giving birth, takes time off work. She's legally allowed to have a break from work and she gets paid. That's maternity leave. The same thing for, for the man is paternity leave. And both maternity and paternity leave are both called parental leave so i am actually officially on parental leave right now um so i'm i'm you could say i'm doing this episode in my spare time but i feel like i always do them in my spare time don't i or do i i don't know work life balance what is that um so i'm not going to make this too long but i just thought i'd mention i could i could do full episodes i feel like i could do full episodes about all of the films that i'm going to mention in this list of films that I've seen fairly recently. So I watched um, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is one of those Marvel movies. Um, now I don't know if you're into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Many of you, you'll just hear me say Marvel, and you'll just be like, yeah, whatever, he's not interested. But some of you might like them. So I think Guardians 3, is it part of Phase 4 or Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I don't know. But... Uh, for me, the films that came out, m most of the films, the Marvel films that have come out after Avengers Endgame, right? Most of the films that have come out after that have not been uh, up to the same standard. I mean, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, I thought were both sort of, for for what they are, which is popcorn comic book movies, 
I thought they were like really well done and um, actually uh, sort of amazing achievements to an extent that they managed to make films that were that engaging and that exciting and that gripping and felt original and felt good. Um, despite having so many different characters and so many different character storylines and so many di different storylines from different movies all converging in one or in this case two films they managed to do that so well uh it was a really it felt like the high watermark of the whole marvel cinematic universe and since then i have to say the other films have not been up to the same high standard except for a couple of ones i watched um the um uh, doctor strange and the multiverse of madness i liked that i enjoyed that the spider-man one what was it spider-man um no way home that's good i enjoyed that one but i i saw the eternals which i thought was just absolutely terrible um the eternals i won't i, I mean again i could do a whole episode on this but i'm not going to um the eternals was just appalling like just terrible script a storyline that it, it, it was so bad that i'm amazed really it was amazingly uh sort of stupid the story apologies if you loved the eternals i mean some things were quite good about it like there was a for example one of the superheroes was was deaf and used sign language and it's not often that you see sign language in any film especially in a sort of high budget uh uh, Hollywood blockbuster so the fact that some of the characters were communicating using sign language I thought was actually really cool and it had some interesting sort of elements to the story as well the fact that some sign language was being used and I love sign language I think it's fascinating to see I love watching people communicating with sign language so that was a really interesting thing and a couple of other things but overall I thought that it was a it was a it was it was a, it was rubbish really the eternals and i think it's it was a huge flop at the box office also i saw uh, ant-man 3 quantum mania which was also not good i could go into reasons why but i mean it had its funny moments but overall it just felt like a complete mess and very um sort of unoriginal it just looked like a bad copy of a guardians of the galaxy film and just anyway and some of the others as well. What else? But Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh my God, I was not expecting it. I didn't expect it to hit me in the way that it hit me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend ages talking about this, but basically, so I'd seen the first two and, and enjoyed them. You know, it was an interesting, funny um, group of um, characters who are sort of weirdos. And it's like a... Uh, um, what's the word? What's the word I'm trying to use here for, to describe these characters? A sort of m mix match or mish mishmash of um, oddball characters, but you strangely become emotionally attached to them. And then in this third film, and I'd lowered my expectations for the third film because I'd been disappointed by some of the other Marvel films from this similar phase the similar time period so i lowered my expectations for guardians of the galaxy 3 thinking this is probably going to be bad i'll probably be disappointed but come on let's 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 do it and um yeah it really got me and i i i'm not i'm not ashamed to admit that i the tears were running down my face i was i was moved uh and more than moved it was really quite upsetting to watch some of the scenes um i found it really really upsetting emotionally upsetting um because there's i won't go into the storyline too much but the 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 one of the characters is called rocket raccoon and yeah he's he's basically a, a, a raccoon who's been sort of i guess genetically modified or experimented on to the point where he's super intelligent he he uh, speaks like a person. He walks on 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 his hind legs like a person does, and he's kind of genius level intelligence. And um, but anyway, we get the origin story of Rocket Raccoon and what happened to him and how he was basically taken as a little baby raccoon. And there's a very bad character and a real bad guy, like a really really despicable 
bad guy character not one of these bad guys who you kind of to extent you understand their motivation and there's a part of them which is maybe quite quite good in a in a sense but they've just done it wrong and you know they they ultimately have to be stopped the bad guy in guardians 3 is just a hundred percent evil and despicable and hateful like it's i haven't hated a character in a movie quite with as much um emotional force as i did the character in this one because of the things he does to these animals even thinking about it now makes me feel um upset and i know a lot of you are just thinking uh, are finding it funny right that that uh, uh a, a a a movie called guardians of the galaxy 3 about like a raccoon and a tree and uh, a woman who's who's green and you know uh one who's like half robot and it's ridiculous but yeah i found it really uh, moving and i came home after going to this film with a friend of mine and i came home and my wife was like so and i said oh my god it was really good you know really really moving and and uh, uh and she's like did you cry i was like yeah i did i cried a few times and she just laughed she just laughed laughed at me she found it uh funny but um yeah wow really good so if you liked guardians of the galaxy one and two or a bit and you like those characters then um yeah i recommend guardians of the galaxy 3 it was a real roller coaster ride of sometimes being really powerfully moved emotionally and then being entertained like there were moments when it was really really funny as well um so that's my take on guardians of the galaxy 3 in terms of horror movies i did watch uh, the witch and i watched hereditary um recently on was it netflix or apple tv or one of those streaming services the witch and hereditary uh, scary horror movies i love scary films scary films um i actually read um some articles recently about how scary films horror films can actually be very good for you because they um oh i won't go into it that's that's another episode for another time so, um, but the witch, oh, is a disturbing one. It's like about a family of sort of Puritan um, Christians from, I guess, the 17th century in the USA, like uh, uh, pilgrims who uh, belong to a very, very puritanical Christian uh, community, and they're cast out from the community, and they go and live on their own uh, next to a, a, a forest. And it's very spooky. And maybe there's a witch in the forest that kidnaps one of the children. And then the family sort of seems to get caught up in the spiral of, is it paranoia? Are they just losing their minds because they're out on their own? Is it their religious beliefs that are the, their belief in the supernatural that's causing them to to um, uh, uh, behave in this way? And they start turning on, on each other. Or maybe there are dark, sinister, evil, satanic forces at work, black magic at work. But it's it really had me scared. And I watched that on my own when my wife was out having dinner. And when she came back, I was like in bed with a blanket held up. You know, I was like being holding onto the blanket. She's like, what's the matter with you? I was like, I saw a scary film, you know. Um, so that I thought was really good really good effective scary film and one of the good things about it is that it was kind of like a uh, terror or rather than horror i think i'm getting this right because there's a difference between horror and terror horror is the is uh when there are when you see it's like the disgust that you see or the bad feelings you get when you see horrible things happening like for example when you when you're actually seeing blood and violence occurring that's horror but then the threat of violence or a, uh, a situation where you feel like there could be some something scary just that atmosphere of like oh what's going to happen oh this is this is creepy that atmosphere that is terror i think i'm getting that right terror horror um difference uh, terror is the feeling of dread and apprehension at the possibility of something frightening while horror is the shock and repulsion of seeing the frightening thing so so the witch for me although there were moments of horror 
liberal moments of horror there were mostly it was terror just a feeling of dark scary foreboding um weirdness even and very well directed the sort of film where it will show you a shot of just the forest with the trees and the branches moving and maybe clouds overhead and a character walking through the forest and it just fills you with a feeling of dread uh, really effective um, i also saw another one hereditary which was similarly creepy and weird with some really horrible moments i thought the first half of the film was a bit better than the second half in the second half it got a bit silly but essentially hereditary is about a kind of a a family that gets caught up in a uh it's similar similar to the witch but hereditary is set in the modern day and it's like a, a family who gets caught up in a a, a, a demon worshipping cult sort of a bit there's a bit of exorcist it's a bit similar to the exorcist but i didn't think it was as as good as the witch the witch is the one that really stayed with me especially the uh the goat there's a goat in that film which is very creepy the goat is called they call him black peter i think uh you have to watch the the film to understand what it is about this goat which is so so memorable um going back to the superhero films i watched spider-man across the spider-verse which is an animated spider-man film and i thought it was brilliant uh first of all the artwork because it's it's animated right so it's all artwork rather than live action the artwork is beautiful like really beautiful illustrations and the animation is fantastic and the number of different styles as well is so cool uh, because you get all these different spider men spider mans spider men spider characters from different universes and each universe has got a different artistic style and it was so cool and colorful and almost overwhelming in its in it in in its uh visual uh design but really good and a really good story like a, another moving story um about a in this case the the, the guy the spider-man he's a, i guess he's a 14 year old and so it really does kind of capture something about the complex feelings that you can have as a 14 year old trying to find your place in the world trying to find a sense of independence but you're not an adult yet you're still a child and trying to get independence from your parents and the parents wondering how much trust they should how much freedom they should give and in the midst of this an incredible adventure through the multiverse of spider-man uh really good um the mission impossible films my wife and i have been binging the mission impossible films um although we started with with mission impossible 3 and uh, and then 4 5 and 6 and this is because mission impossible 7 dead reckoning part 1 is going to be in the cinemas soon and so we wanted to catch up on the other ones and those mission impossible films are are good they're just good solid action films tom cruise doing his tom cruise thing running m usually it's either tom cruise running through a different environment like running across a rooftop running through a crowded street in london or paris running through the desert with a big sandstorm behind him just tom cruise running at top speed in different countries um or it's tom cruise nearly dying in different countries so it's like tom cruise nearly falling off a top a, uh, a very tall building and then falling off the tall building but not not you know but somehow surviving tom cruise falling out of a plane tom cruise crashing a helicopter um all sorts tom cruise nearly drowning you know um if that's what you like if you want to watch tom cruise nearly killing himself um on a big screen then the the mission impossible films are good four five and six i think i i th they're all very high quality i think but i think maybe they get a little bit better each time um like starting with mission impossible four uh three two and one one is good two is is a not great film really all things considered it doesn't feel like a, a the other mission impossible films 
Mission Impossible 3 is pretty good, especially um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, the actor who plays the bad guy, is great. It's, it's, he's just a brilliant actor and he's, he always lifts a, a film, whatever he's in, whatever he was in, because unfortunately he's no longer with us. But whichever, whatever he did, Philip Seymour Hoffman, he brought a... a, 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 a he brought a lot to the films he did and it's also true for Mission Impossible 3 um, but 4, 5 and 6 yeah great films and they it feels like they get a little bit better each time with more crazy set pieces more crazy stunts um, and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing Mission Impossible 7 if we ever get to the cinema ever again because now that you know we're about to have a baby maybe that's you know, we're not going to be able to get to the cinema again, but, you know, who knows? Babysitters, babysitters are a thing. Um, Top Gun Maverick as well, another top, recent Tom Cruise film, which just, I have to say, I was blown away by it. I don't normally like films about war and stuff, despite what you might think, because I love Star Wars and I love Marvel movies where people are constantly punching each other. Uh, I don't really go for the full-on war movies. Top Gun Maverick, although there is obviously a backdrop of war and fighting it's not really a war movie it's about the characters and about these people having to uh, do something impossible and um, the emotional context of it you know it's the emotional context which is played out through the action but Top Gun Maverick my god I mean it's 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 a film about fighter pilots right doing fighter pilot stuff flying planes as fast as humanly possible and doing things that are almost impossible uh like going through g-force that the human body shouldn't really be able to deal with in order to achieve an, an a seemingly impossible mission and a lot of it was filmed with real fighter jets you know it's, it's they don't use special effects they used real jets to do the real scenes and they had the actors in the planes they were flying them sometimes um i mean the action is just stunning edge of your seat action um and uh tom cruise again just with that incredible star power that he's got that level of charisma that he brings um but i thought that top gun maverick was definitely better than the original one maybe the love story the romantic side of it could have they could have had a bit more romance in it but uh, in terms of the action and the storytelling, it was just almost flawless. Um, at, it was like a fighter jet. The film is like a fighter jet. It's just uh, incredibly efficient. Um, a perform, you know, uh, incredible levels of performance and efficiency and design and work has gone into this thing, and it's so crafted, so well put together a story so well told and timed and directed um i thought it was incredible um and uh, what else um sorcerer a, a film from the 1970s about some guys trying to drive trucks full of uh, volatile explosives through the jungle and that's a masterpiece in 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 tense movie making uh, I did a whole episode with Anthony Rotuno about it. You may have heard us mention it. Um, you can find it on uh, his YouTube channel. I'll put a I'll put a link to it in the description, or I'll, I'll embed it uh, on the page for this episode. Our conversation about Sorcerer. I don't need to talk about it more, really, except to say that it's a film from 1977, which was um, directed by the director of The Exorcist, William Friedkin. Um, Friedkin had had great success with The Exorcist and with another film called The French Connection. These two films were huge hits. And so he was given a lot of creative control to make this third film called Sorcerer. And it was made under extreme conditions in the jungle. It sounds completely insane the way they made it. Like the making of the film is almost as mad as the, as the things that happen in the film itself. Um, there's a scene where they have to drive these trucks over a uh, a very precarious rope bridge going over um, uh, a torrent of uh, a, a river in, a, in the middle of a storm. And the trucks are, you know, look like they're going to fall into the water at any moment. It's like incredibly exciting and tense. Really like you, you, you bite your nails, you, you're right on the edge of your chair. Um, 
And they actually did it as well when making the film. They actually did that. And the trucks did fall off the bridge and fall into the water. It's a miracle that no one died making the film. But anyway, if, you would, if you'd like to hear my conversation with Anthony all about Sorcerer, then just check the, the page for this episode on my website. I'll put the, the video uh, for that there. It's, it's going to be an episode of Anthony's podcast called Film Gold. Um, so... Yes. Also, I wanted to see the, the the latest Fast and Furious film. Okay. Um, now, in terms of films, I like, I, I think I like the fairly intelligent highbrow films, but I also do like cheesy mainstream blockbuster movies as well, especially when they are genuinely good. Now, the Fast and Furious films, I don't know if they're genuinely good or not. They're exciting films. There are some exciting moments of action in those films. But um, I wanted to see Fast and Furious 10, the latest Fast and Furious film. The Fast and the Furious. I wanted to see that. In fact, my friend and I went to see that. We, we were going to, going to see it. We got to the cinema. It was full. There weren't any seats left. So we went to see Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse instead, which was probably a better film. Um, but anyway, but... There's a new, there has been a new Fast and Furious film in the cinemas and that got me thinking about the Fast and Furious and I wrote some stand-up comedy material about it and um, before I kind of took a break uh, from stand-up because, you know, my wife being pregnant and stuff, I didn't want to be out in the evenings because, you know, I wanted to be at home to help, you know, just put my, put our daughter to bed and stuff because I'm such a great husband. Um uh, but before that, I had been doing some stand-up quite regularly every week. And so I, you know, because I saw Fast and Furious posters. You know, the Fast and Furious, it's a series of films about uh, some guys who basically drive cars really fast in order to solve problems. Like, whatever the problem is, the solution is get in the car and drive really fast. Lots of car chases. It's got Vin Diesel in it. Uh, in the films, uh, uh, there's been 10 films. They've had The Rock in there. They've had, um, uh, what's his name? Jason Statham. Jason Statham. Um, and other big movie stars have been in these in this series. Um, so, Fast and Furious. I think it's an international franchise. I'm sure it's famous around the world. So seeing the posters everywhere, seeing the trailers in the cinema and on, on the internet and stuff, it got me thinking about the Fast and Furious. And I wrote some stand-up material. And I did it on stage a few times. And I recorded myself one of the shows I did recently. I recorded the audio. Now, I would, I'm going to play you a clip of it. I can't play the whole thing because the sound quality is not good enough. Uh, because I had, the, the, um, I had my phone recording me on a table in front of me and it didn't pick up the sound very well but then at some point during the during the show i picked up my phone in order to read from it and i'll play you that part i'm talking about the names of the different fast and furious films starting with the first one uh and then the second third fourth fifth all the way up to the the tenth one so i'm talking about the names of the films but the other bit i can't play you that because the sound quality is not good enough. But I'll basically say the material that I wrote. It won't be as funny because it's just not the same when you're not in front of an audience. But anyway, here is, here's the stuff I wrote. So there's a new Fast and Furious movie out. It's Fast and Furious 10. How long has this franchise been going on now? Over 20 years. 20 years. That's a long time. And they're still furious. 20 years later, we're still furious. Usually anger dissipates over time doesn't it you know after a while eventually you're just like oh, you know i'm too i'm too tired to be angry and <laughs> never mind not these guys though they're still holding on to their anger they're still fast and furious always angry always in a rush because they're fast and furious just like ah just in a rush i'm angry here i want to be angry over there now what tell you one place they're not in a rush to get to therapy yeah, because if they all went to therapy, that would be the end of the franchise, wouldn't it? They just, they wouldn't be furious anymore. They'd have to rename the the franchise, the formerly Fast and Furious, or the the uh, we're when you know the taking our time and everything's okay, which I don't think would be such a successful film franchise. Can they even remember why they're so furious after so many years? Like what what, what were we furious about anyway? I can't remember. 
I think it was something to do with cars, wasn't it? And family. Vin Diesel, he's the star of the films. He, Vin Diesel, you've seen him in the posters. He doesn't look that furious, to be fair. He's mainly kind of stoic, you know, he's just quite calm. Quiet and calm, really. The fast and fine. Right? It's, yeah, Vin Diesel. He pumped all the fury into his arms, didn't he? Poof. He just pushed all his fury into his arms. That's where all the fury went with Vin Diesel. Just pow, into the arms. Um, I think one day Vin Diesel will probably be too old for the Fast and Furious. Uh, uh, you know, he's basically able to do it now. He's able to do, like, shuffle himself around the film set. Uh, but one day he will be just too old, you know, when he's an old age pensioner when he's in his 60s or 70s or into his 80s, I don't think he'll be able to keep doing it. They'll have to, you know, if they do, they would have to rename the film. It wouldn't be The Fast and Furious. It would be The Slow and Incontinent, I think, probably. The Slow and Incontinent. There's a movie franchise nobody is looking for, but which we will all have starring roles in eventually. We've all got a part in that particular movie one day, haven't we? The Slow and Immobile. Um... Anyway, uh, so there you go. That was that was some of my stand-up material, which I'm telling you, I can. You just believe me, folks. When I do that on stage in front of an audience of nine people, oh my god, absolutely electric. So um, let me play the recording though of the rest of my set where I talk about the names of the films, um, and this was recorded in front of I think about fifteen people, so a small audience of people. Um, which is often the way it goes uh, with doing stand-up comedy shows in English in Paris. Uh, it's kind of potluck. Some shows you get an audience. Some shows just no one seems to turn up because no one understands or no one knows about the show. It depends. Some shows you always get a fairly good audience. Other shows just no one seems to know about it. And so you just get a random audience of people. Um, yeah, I think actually at this show, I think there was a Lepster in the audience. Um so hello to you if you were there. Oh no, I've got to remember her name now. This is embarrassing and I can't I'm not allowed to edit. Oh dear. Oh god, this is this is embarrassing. I can't remember her name. But um she follows me on Twitter. What am I gonna do now? Go through my entire Twitter feed in order to find uh the name of that lovely Lepster who came to the show. I'm very I'm terribly sorry. Look, I'm going all red in my face because I can't remember your name. But um yeah, so sorry. But anyway, uh, it was great to have you in the audience at that show. Thank you for coming. Let me now play you that bit of material about the names of the Fast and Furious films. Here we go. So I was looking at the titles of the Fast and Furious films, okay? And this is, I'm going to finish with this, all right? Uh, I'm not going to keep talking about the Fast and Furious for nine hours. I could, <laughs> but I won't. So I'll just briefly go through the titles of the ten films. The first one is obviously The Fast and the Furious, episode, uh, episode one, 2001. The second film was called Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> this title was written by their parents. <laughs> Slow down, calm down. Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> Stop, put that down. Get out of the car. No, you, you can't drive. You're five years old. No, um, second one. Uh, the third one is the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Suddenly they ended up in Tokyo. What happened? We drove too fast. We lost control. We flew over the Atlantic, the Pacific Ocean. We ended up in Tokyo. We drifted all the way across. Uh, the fourth one is called Fast and Furious. Just Fast and Furious. By this point, the core values of the franchise had been established. Just Fast and Furious. Without the the. No, yeah, just ditch the, ditch the unnecessary words. Keep it simple, fast and furious. Just carry on, we're cruising now. Okay. Cruising, no need for smaller words to get in the way. Uh, the, the fifth one, fast five. <laughs> fast five, it was called. Because they just, they forgot to be furious. <laughs> just fast five, it sounds like a kid's, kid's book, doesn't it? The fast five, hey, we're fast. <laughs> Solving mysteries, the Fast Five did it again. Yeah, they forgot to be furious, Fast Five. Number six is called Fast and Furious Six. <laughs> um, they remembered, they remembered to be furious. They're like, well, we're furious, okay. Ah, fast and furious, ah, go, go places quickly and angrily. Uh, the, the seventh one, uh, 2015, is called Furious Seven. 
<laughs> which, as far as I can tell, is just some people standing there, absolutely livid. <laughs> they're not fast anymore, they're just furious. And there's seven of them, just, ah, we're fucking, fucking hell, just really fucking furious. I don't know what happened, they lost their driving license. Ah, just fucking furious. You two, yes, and me, and me, and me, and me, and me, and me. that's seven. And then uh, number eight is uh, the fate of the furious. The fate of the furious. High blood pressure. <laughs> that is the fate. If you maintain that level of fury for those many years, then you know, just reduce, you know, cut out the butter and salt is basically my advice in that case. Number number num, number nine is called F9, uh, which is not as fast as F1. <laughs> Okay, and number 10, the one we've got in the cinemas now is called Fast X Furious. It's a collaboration between Fast and Furious. They collaborated to make one final film. That's all my time, ladies and gents. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Right, that's it. I think it's time for me to stop doing this now. Uh, I don't mean the podcast like in general i just mean this particular episode um i'm going to stop doing this now and then just just rest and relax and maybe have a little little nap in order to absorb some of that sleep which i can then use later not that that's how the human body works but anyway thank you very much for listening to luke's english podcast i'm luke obviously i did why did i say that i don't know I think after after over an hour and a half of listening this listening to this and maybe many other hours of other episodes you probably have worked out my name by now but uh, can you spell it though that's the point l-u-k-e anyway thanks for listening to the podcast um yeah that's it lovely to talk to you i hope it's been lovely to sit and or stand or lie down and listen to me and i'll speak to you again on the podcast soon uh, and maybe the next episode will be um will be recorded maybe the next episode will be a chance for me and possibly my wife too and maybe even our daughter to talk about the arrival of our second child and oh there's that one question which i'm sure someone out there has been wondering if you're still listening but how does your daughter feel about this about having uh, a brother arriving she's fine with it as far as i can tell she's she she says that she is looking forward to it and she she likes to kind of um talk to the baby she talks to the baby in my wife's uh, uh belly you know she does talk to her, talk to the baby and uh i think she's excited about it sometimes she says that she's nervous which i think is a healthy thing that she she is able to talk about her feelings quite openly she says i'm a bit nervous and we say why are you nervous and she says i'm gonna I, i'm gonna be jealous so she thinks she might be jealous of a baby and then we say to her yeah but it's all right you know the baby's gonna love you the baby's going to love having an older sister like you. He's, you know, and, and you can see that she's excited about the prospect. I think she's looking forward to it too. Um, hopefully she's going to be a good older sister. Um, but generally, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll speak to you uh, on the podcast soon. It'll be two months uh, for me, but probably about one week for you. Uh, such is the magic of podcasting. All right then. Cheers, everybody. Speak to you next time. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.